The nice thing is that the review process that you've been engaging in, where you write out your thought process for the tempting wrong answer, the discouraging right answers, really engaging in that kind of analysis, that's going to help you make, see that pattern recognition so that on test day, you can automatically relate a new question back to all those previous questions you've done. That analysis, that, that is the work really. And so being confident, I think, is having that kind of that blink insight to see, oh, this is that method of reasoning. And this answer choice that was, that's wrong was tweaked in that particular way to make it wrong. Mm -hmm. If you can spot that faster, that's going to that's gonna be golden for you. And obviously, a minute and a half is a pretty severe time constraint, and that's the average logical reasoning time that you have. But as you know, there's easier logical reasoning, there's tougher logical reasoning. So if you can get even faster on those easy logical reasoning questions, those first 10 questions in a section, if you get through those in a minute each, you have that time back so you can slow down. Because a tough question, two minutes, two and a half, three minutes, that's reasonable. That's okay. They might take that amount of time. Honestly, I don't love the annotation tools on the digital LSAT regardless. Even if things are working properly, I think that it's not the most responsive and not the most intuitive. And so for those, who, for those who aren't aware, there's an underlining tool. There are three different colored highlighters, yellow, orange, and pink, but you can't underline and highlight at the same time and you can't highlight multiple colors on the same text. So there are some restrictions there. For those who haven't seen it, if you go on familiar.lsac.org, you can play around with the familiarization tool. There's tests 71, 73, and 74 on there. There will be a few more in the near future. But as far as the tools, I don't love them. I wouldn't use them. I would say, just stick with your scratch paper. Have that be all you need. You write down a few key words, a few key phrases, maybe for logic, for reading comprehension. Of course, it's more useful to do like little summaries or, key or phrase summaries. For logical reasoning, I don't think it's necessary or useful at all, though. One thing you might do is highlight in between the evidence and conclusions. You could highlight if there's like a period that, were, that ends the evidence sentence and then right before the conclusion sentence, you could highlight that little period as kind of making a separation. Or you could highlight a key word or phrase in the question stem that relates to the question type. But I wouldn't do more than that. And I certainly wouldn't do it for reading comprehension either. <laughs> Prephrasing is actually more about engaging with the method of reasoning and being familiar with the underlying general principle. To me, it's not about question type. The only way in which it does relate to question type in my mind is that certain question types lend themselves to prephrasing and others don't. Like for flaw questions, you can definitely prephrase if you can articulate and identify the flaw for yourself. But for inference questions, there are multiple potential inferences you don't, and you don't always know where they're going to draw from. But the, for me, the predictions, it comes back to engaging with the method of reasoning, engaging with the argument in a very real world sense, as if somebody was having a conversation with you. So the more that you can do that, and the more you can get away from the abstract language and make it relatable, the better off you'll be, the faster you'll relate to it. And so as an exercise, if you're seeing tough language, whether it's in the stimulus, like a topic on aestheticism for me was always like a very kind of wonky to try to make that more relatable. Or if we're dealing with, let's say, a, a science topic, or if we're dealing with dense text in the answer choices, like for flaw questions, when they refer to flaws in abstract terms, if you can, the better that you can understand and relate to those phrases, the faster you can get through it and the better off you'll be in terms of prephrasing. You've done a lot of exams already, but the more you can do, the more you can expose yourself to. Because there are some where that particular method of reasoning might only show up every seven or 10 or 12 exams. Like there's your common ones, then your, there's your less common ones. There's kind of, there's diminishing marginal returns, but you want the top score 175 to 180. You even, you need those little, that, that long tail of infrequent methods of reasoning which means you're digging deeper into the bucket.